Welcome back everybody to another American Viscountess at home. And here I am, I am at home. I'm in the muniment room here at Mapperton. And if you've watched our sister channel, Mapperton Live, recently, you would have seen the muniment room being completely transformed. So do check out that video. When I first married into the family over two decades ago now, this room looked completely different. And because of the generous support um, of many donations that came in for the Alberta Research Project, we've been able to really transform this room so that it is now just a wonderful place to work. And in particular for me to do my dissertation and archiving of the topic for my dissertation, topic being Alberta Sturgis, the ninth American Countess of Sandwich. And Alberta was just like me. She was an American who came over here uh, and married into the Montague family over 100 years ago now. We were both from Chicago, we both had four children, and believe it or not, we both had a huge love of yoga. If you think about it, at the turn of the 20th century, yoga was not near as well known as it is now. I mean, yoga is known now around the globe, but the turn of the 20th century, you know, it was sort of a new thing and it was considered kind of out there. And yet Alberta's life really revolved around bhakti yoga, karma yoga, and these wonderful branches of yoga that represent service. She was a follower of Swami Vivekananda. So we both have this incredible uh, similarity and love of yoga. After I was able to really transform this muniment room and bring the archives back in, it gave me the opportunity to reorganize this room. And one of the things that I've been looking out for are any photographs of Alberta, because of course we have to remember that again, the turn of the 19th century and even the early 20th century, you know, photography, it, it wasn't, um, you know, we didn't all have smartphones, <laughs> that's for sure. And many people didn't have cameras. It was new technology. And of course, all the photos were in black and white. And I have been able to find some of Alberta's photo albums. And there were things, I think photographs in particular that I've been looking for, of course, around her marriage to George. I do have her wedding photograph uh, where she is wearing the tiara. But other than that, I wasn't able to find uh, so many photos of her, you know, when she first married into the Montague family. But also, when I was looking through a lot of the letters that Alberta had written and are here in the muniment room, the letterhead said Chalfont Lodge. And that's where she first lived after her marriage to George Montague. Unfortunately, that house was pulled down. And I've been able to find Chalfont Lodge in her photo albums. So let's have a look together of really some photographs that I've chosen for you to see because I know that many of you watching this, you've had this interest in Alberta just like me and want to see more of her just like me. So I think probably the most important photo album that I found, and I will be scanning these uh, in the wonderful digital scanner, uh, that has come through the donations from the Alberta Research Project. I will be scanning these photos so that we forever have them. But I have found um, a little bit more on her wedding day. So Alberta's half-sister was Francie Leggett. Alberta's mother, Betty Leggett, um, remarried when uh, Alberta was um, in her early 20s and she married Frank Leggett and they had one child together, and that was Francie. So you can see, and Francie was one of Alberta's bridesmaids. You can see in this photograph here, Francie on my wedding day, 1905. And fast forward, they, George and Alberta ended up honeymooning at Ridgely Manor in upstate New York. And Ridgely Manor is this extraordinary house that Frank Leggett, Alberta's stepfather, um, ha had built and it, it's beautiful, uh, absolutely beautiful. And here we have a photograph of George and Alberta um, on their honeymoon at Ridgely, 1905. 
And as I turn the page, I see this incredibly glamorous photograph of Alberto with really uh, in the light, in the sunlight, a beautiful hat. You can see George at Chalfont's Lodge. And then we're moving into Chalfont Lodge um, between 1905 and 1910. And I think that's uh, the period that they were there. Um, so it's not in chronological order, but it does show me Chalfont Lodge between 1905 and 1910. It's a beautiful home. You can see the gardens, the back view of the lodge. They had tennis courts there. I mean, an absolutely exquisite, exquisite home. And for me now, when I read about Chalfont Lodge, I'll be able to have this house and this image in my memory. So I can almost imagine where she was walking um, and sort of placing her somewhere, which does absolutely help. They have a lake there, so Chalfont Lodge Lake. Um, view from the dining room windows, the pond and the garden. Uh, Chalfont Pines in December 1906. And then again, another photograph of the interiors of Chalfont Lodge with George at the heart of it. So for me, again, that's incredibly helpful to be able to place Alberta somewhere in my mind when I read these letters. And of course, all of these letters, we are in the process of scanning the letters so that we can digitize them, meta tag them, and so they'll be easily, uh, easily searched um, when they're made available. And it's been wonderful, the Alberta Research Project. So many of you are virtually volunteering across the globe. And Lucy, who's another American who lives here in England, uh, she's been helping on the project as well. And we've been able to really start to scan these letters together and then put them out to all 50 of our virtual volunteers who will help to transcribe them because I can tell you that Alberta's handwriting is rather tricky to read. So just looking through a little bit more of these photographs, the other, I, I think, um, photograph that I was hoping to find was, of course, Billy, the uh, nephew of Alberta, so Alberta's brother, Holly. Holly and his wife, Jean, were traveling to India uh, because of Holly's work. He was working for a leather merchant and they left their son, Billy, in the care of Alberta and George. And if you've watched that video, uh, we've done two uh, videos on the tragic death of Alberta's nephew, Billy, in 1908. I, I wanted to see if there was any photograph of Billy anywhere, and I think I found it. Now, it's very tricky to see Billy, but his name is written. <laughs> so I don't think I'm necessarily taking a stab in the dark because everywhere um, there is, um, uh, th there's written um, people's names and places. So if I focus in here, 1908, there's sort of a before and an after, the before of the group of people getting ready to take the photograph and then really the after they're all seated pretty much and they take the photograph and when i look closely in fact at both photographs i can see on the very edge of the one photograph when they're all getting ready um, uh, a little baby and what is definitely victor which would have been alberta's firstborn son uh, and the baby is sitting on Alberta's lap. Then when I switch over to this other photograph, when they're pretty much all seated down, it lists the names. And as I uh, scroll down the first row, I see the word Billy. So for me, that uh, does, you know, she is holding baby. It's not Victor, her baby, because when I look at the very, very front row, it says sitting. Um, you can see there is uh, Victor who is sitting down and then it looks like Mary and her poodles, which are all sitting down on the blanket. Uh, so that, that, there she is. She's actually holding Billy. 
uh, and the name is written here. So rather extraordinary just to see that photograph. I, I couldn't believe it when I came across it that here we have found um, a, a picture of, of Billy. And so uh, wonderful again for me to go through these photo albums. And I think the other sort of photograph that I was looking for was a photograph of her brother. I do have in the archive quite a few photographs of her mother, Betty Leggett, who she corresponded with quite a bit, her aunt, Betty's sister, uh, who uh, Josephine McLeod, uh, and Alberta referred to her as Tantine. I have quite a, good photographs of them, but not so much of her brother, Holly, who was Billy's father, and Jean, Holly's wife. And I opened up this photograph and this really kind of pulled at my heart because it is a wonderful photograph of her brother Holly, his wife Jean, and three children. There are three children that were born after the death of Billy. So after the death of Billy, they had a daughter named Betty, followed by Paul, and then the youngest being Jack. And here they are right uh, here in 1924 at Ridgely Manor, uh, and it says the Sturgis family. So it's wonderful just to see that, of course, that picture of a smiling, I mean, they're all smiling, really happy family, uh, despite um, the firstborn, their firstborn son, Billy, um, sadly dying uh, in 1908. So it really does for me, I think, help to complete a picture, much more of a picture of Alberta's life and those people that she was so close to, in particular her brother, seeing her with Billy, but also seeing Chalfont Lodge, where she spent the first part of her marriage before they moved into Hinchingbrook in 1916, and really some wonderful, happy, happy memories. And these are just a few of uh, a handful of photo albums because of the donations that we received, we were able to purchase a fireproof uh, archive cabinet, which is just absolutely brilliant. And so I'll be spending a lot more time in this room trolling through many more of Alberta's photographs and, and photo albums because I'm sure there is a lot more to uncover. Again, thank you so much for joining me for another American Viscountess at Home. Do comment down below and I'll be doing many more of these at homes with you and with a real focus on Alberta, especially as I start to dive more into the archives. These letters are all being transcribed and I think that we'll be back here very soon because I still have quite a few more photo albums to go through. So be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. Thanks again for joining and see you back here very soon. Bye everybody.